everyone, my name is Shireen and welcome back. Today I want to go through the November devlog from the Dauntless developers. And this one is going to be pretty epic because as you can see from this tweet right here, it says in our November devlog from the Shuttle's Isles, we share how the world of the Shuttle's Isles will be transforming and what you can look forward to in this brave new world. And as you can see from this picture, it looks pretty epic. Uh, so we have maybe some steeds here, we have some new um, creatures coming to the islands. The Shattered Isles dev blog, the world of the Shattered Isles. Okay, hey Slayers, welcome to the fourth installment of our monthly dev blogs discussing ongoing development work for the Shattered Isles. In today's blog we share how the world of the Shattered Isles will be transforming and what you can look forward to in this brave new world. Let's dive right in. So, Defend the Frontier, the world of Dauntless, shaped by Aether and replete with lush forests of towering trees and active volcanoes, plays host to humanity and a myriad of other creatures, some docile, some dangerous. Up to now, we have not placed much focus on truly fleshing this world out to its full potential. Instead of simply set dressing for hunts and fights, we want our world to be a place you actually care about. One that offers you a more immersive gameplay experience. To that end, we have been working on several new additions and improvements. A brand new world map will give you a closer look at the shape of the frontier, show you the threats the world is currently facing, and highlight the impact that you have on the world as a slayer. Interesting, okay. New complex creatures will add more variety to the ecosystem and affirm behemoths at the apex predators in the Shadows Isles. Additional world fixtures will give more character to the islands. Improved island events will make the world more dynamic. Brand new legend hunts will tell unique stories about specific enemies. Interesting. I am intrigued. Okay. Let's keep going. The world map. To guide you through your adventure in the Shattered Isles, we are introducing a new world map. For the first time in the history of Dauntless, you will get a detailed and clear look at the shape of the frontier. The world map will also show where each region lies in comparison to the other notable places in the Isles. You will be able to see the edges of Avalinia, dis distinguish the borders of Ostia, and observe just how remote the Scar oh, Skaldeska Isles are from the rest of humanity. That's actually pretty cool. So I've always wondered this, that every time there's like a new character in, introduced in Dauntless, every time there's some new lore that's thrown at us through side quests, um, quests and rumours, I'm always interested in seeing where they actually come from. You know, we don't actually get to see their area, we only see them in the actual Isles. Uh, aside from being a visual compass, the new map will replace H Hunt screen as your main menu for selecting hunts. Interesting. So instead of having like the main menu and then you like select hunt and you select escalation or whatever, now we get the full map. Okay, cool. The map will be divided into six regions. The Montrous Verge, Skaldiska Lowlands, Stormwall, Ostean Borderlands, The Reach and The Crystal Sorrow. Wow, <laughs> cool names. Each region comprises of four islands, one of which is the main front of power in that region. The Escalation Island. As you explore each region, there will be unique masteries, collections and story quests for you to learn more about what's happening in the centre of the world. That is very, very cool. I have to admit, some of my favourite quests and rumours in this game are where you're discovering new characters and their background and stuff like that. So actually, that's really cool. That's the one thing I love about this game, that you don't have to just like fight behemoths and you know do trials and escalations you can actually run around the maps now you can and you know get different rumors learn about the cultures of different characters to give you an idea of what you can expect here is the preview of the monstrous verge the islands are always drifting leading these ones to settle near the heavy pull of terra aether in arbor home okay for now this region will be home to many terra behemoths unlike the monstrous verge you may be familiar from open beta which had a mix of isles. Oh, wow, look at this. This is crazy. The Montrous Verge. This is where all the terror behemoths would be. Wow. Okay. So it looks like they're finally doing that thing where you have specific 
elemental behemoths on specific islands. I've been looking forward to that for so long. Like, you know how annoying it is? I mean, I know a lot of you watch this probably know how annoying it is. When you jump into an escalation and you only get, like, random behemoths, like, you jump into a terror escalation and you'll get, like, one terror behemoth. Or you get, like, two terror behemoths. This is a great way to do it. I'm actually looking, I'm actually excited. I'm intrigued and excited for this. Okay. The Montress Verge, Defend the Frontier. This one is selected at the moment, Ulrich's Peaks. I don't know what these numbers mean, or what these exclamation marks mean. I'm, I'm guessing the exclamation mark mean um, quests or rumours, maybe? Island history, named for farmed explorer Ulrich Mass, who once planted a marker atop its highest peak. This mountainous island is home to behemoths that don't have any fear of heights. There appear to be the remains of a fastly assessment here, similar to Arborhome. But if it had a name, it's as mysterious as the far slayers themselves. Interesting. So the Arbor Home is where Zale is from, I believe. I think that's where Agris is, Arbor Home. Under Bull Defile as well. Cool. This is <laughs> This is really cool. Okay. Uh, with Behemoth being a persistent threat in the Isles, the Shattered Isles, it is your job as a slayer to defend the islands and keep these beasts at bay. As such, we will introduce a new mechanic. Defense scores. Okay, so I'm guessing this is what these numbers are. Defense scores. That would make sense, actually, because there's shields on it as well. Okay. What are defense scores? You'll have a defense score on each island. Yes, okay. This score measures the combined activity by you and your guildmates. Ah, okay, on that island. At the end of every season, each island's defense score resets to zero and everyone in the guild will be rewarded based on, yes, finally, they're actually doing something with guilds, dude. Like, oh my gosh. Guilds are such a... Uh, guilds has so much potential, potential sorry, in this game. And they just didn't do anything with them. You know, they had the Slayer Links. The Slayer Links should have been part of the guilds, to be honest. Uh, but I'm actually very glad that they're doing something with guilds. Especially someone with a YouTube channel. I feel like if I had the guild for my YouTube channel, like that would be so much fun. And to actually like, work towards a goal and some rewards. So, defense scores represent the fact that behemoths are a persistent and ongoing threat in our world. And that each island must be defended by slayers like you. Through this mechanic, we will encourage new slayers to join guilds, give more experienced players something worthwhile to complete for, and foster the opportunity for guildmates to work together. Exactly, this is what I've wanted this whole time. Guilds with the highest score in a particular island will become the rulers of the island. Oh, the following season. This means that your guild title and tag will be displayed for all to see, all season long. We are talking about top tier bragging rights here as you deserve that's really cool wow because i don't think there's ever been anything in the game that kind of shows a guild you know you can have your little guild name next to your um, username in the game but that's it there's no like you know reward system for it or anything so that's actually gonna be really cool okay so here we go new creatures Let's open that one Okay, the Shadow Isles is inhabited by more than just humans and behemoths. Come summer 2024, get ready to meet three new creatures. Orchids, Vespers, and Chaoxes, I think that's how you say? Wow. So I wonder which one, I'm assuming this is the Vesper. Okay, so Orchids, I'm guessing, let's see this one. So I'm guessing these are going to be the Orchids. They look kind of flowery. I'm guessing this is the Vesper. And I'm guessing these are the chaoxes, is that what they're called? Oh, okay, I wonder what they do, are they... Okay, so... Orchids have very sharp appendages and the ability to launch elemental projectiles. <laughs> they are stealthy creatures that will ambush any unwitting creature or slayer. Creature or slayer, interesting. Vespers are extremely territorial flying insects that hatch from nests. They have poisonous stingers and will defend their nests with their lives. Wow. Okay. Chaoxes are a type of theropod. They are highly intelligent, hunt in packs, and their mixed subspecies specialize in different forms of attacks. Okay. So I was correct. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Interesting. 
So we just have like the Gruk Gruks and the... I actually don't remember what the, the dog things are called. Uh, but I think those two are on every island in the game. So it's actually, actually going to be very interesting to see the brand new fauna in the game and see how much they annoy us and if they have <laughs> different events centered around them as well. And if they drop anything that we can use for crafting potions or weapons and stuff, that would be kind of cool. Okay, you might be asking why add new creatures? For starters, we wanted to bring more diversity to the types of encounters available to you on the islands. Thank you. These small moments of surprise can break up the moment the monotony of hunting behemoths. Having these creatures roam the islands also allows us to demonstrate the complexity and wonder of the world ecosystem, all while firmly cementing behemoths as the apex predators in this world. Very true. Behemoths are the biggest enemy you will come across, but they are certainly not the only foes out there. We know small creatures that perish after a hit or two often present more of an annoying distraction rather than a meaningful challenge. True. Especially Grok Groks. The, the amount of times I've been knocked off of an island, an isle, by a Grok Grok. Especially when battling Behemoth, they're, they're, they're annoying. Like, they're actually annoying. <laughs> so, <laughs> the dogs not so much. The dogs are actually a challenge, especially when they like grab onto you and you have to shake them off. Uh, okay. I see. With this in mind, we designed fights with Orchids, Vespers and Chaoxes to be more substantial encounters of their own. These creatures will boast a series of interesting attacks that can do real damage, unlike the smaller creatures we currently have, e.g. Gruk Gruks, exactly. The new creatures are not simple kills, they will require some focused combat to defeat. Fights with them are intended to be more challenging than the small creatures, but less challenging than a behemoth. Okay, that makes sense. Very cool, so that the mid-tier, kind of like the mid-tier boss. Okay, so they're the little mini-boss before the big boss battle. Okay, cool. Sounds good. We are still working on finding the right balance for these creatures and their corresponding rewards. Currently, drops include materials that can be used to craft tonics, grenades, and pylons. Very cool. This would replace the passive act of gathering materials. Additionally, these creatures might also guard little secrets on the islands and reward you with things like bonuses, chests, and more. Yes! Very cool. I, do, I, I don't mind running around and collecting... Um, you know, stuff for potions like the flowers and the rocks and stuff. Um, but yeah, it'll be nice to do something different than running around each island just trying to get those stuff, that, those things, sorry. Uh, world fixtures. Aside from new creatures, we have also been adding new interactive world fixtures. We are currently exploring having shrines that grant temporary power ups when unlocked, chests that require special abilities are open, and special quests that can only be completed while you are on an island. Our goal is to make exploring other parts of the island not just rewarding but also fun. All of these would still be in service of the key that matters most in Dortmund's slaying behemoth. This is what. Yes, this is what I'm looking forward to because there are, at the moment, there are rumours on different islands. I know Cape Fury has a few, um, but they're more like rumours where you kind of go to a person on that island and you do specific things for that person. But usually the role. The rewards for that are kind of, ugh. <laughs> you know, like this guy, it's not Cape Fury, but there's another island, um, I can't remember the name of it, this is really bad, where this guy is abandoned and he has to like do a hunt, but he doesn't want to do a hunt, so you go there, and basically you do the hunt for him, but you only get a ramps. There's another one, and I think it's Ulrich's Peak, there's one where you are um, helping an Arbor Home gardener uh, find glow seeds, you help them make the fertilizer for the seas by defeating behemoths and running around the island. And again, out of that, you only get a few rams. You might get some merits, you know? But stuff like this is really cool, where you can actually explore the island and actually get proper rewards for those things. And do specific things towards those um, fixtures. So yeah, I'm actually looking forward. This is sounding exciting. I'm not going to lie about it. I just hope it's executed well. Island events. We have been making some changes to the way we approach island events. We plan to have island events happen island-wide, not just in a single area. Island events will also have more known start times, so you will not have to wonder when they will begin. Okay, cool. We want to make sure there are clear goals on an island. You would still be able to explore freely if you wanted to. 
but those who like having some sort of guidance or direction could benefit from this. We are also exploring ways to make island events contribute to you feeling like you are making a difference in the world of Shadow Isles. Interesting. Yeah, the, I, I do enjoy island events, especially when they actually are part of said rumours and quests. Uh, but they can be kind of grindy sometimes, you know, depending on what event it is. Um, I think most people, I think, enjoy them. Um, there are different events on different islands. And then we have Legend Hunt. Ooh, what is this? Legend Hunts, a brand new hunt type. These hunts will let you take the fight directly to the Behemoth's Lair. Where you will then face off with fearsome foes boasting new models and updated movesets. Is that a Rift Stalker? These hunts should be should challenge even season slayers who think they have learnt a behemoth's rotation. Each hunt will reveal unique stories about specific enemies. Some of the legend the behemoths are working on are the Setikai, the Fallen King, Rock the Rooster Mother, and Kaigu, the Black Flame. Wow, okay, let's watch this one then. This is crazy. Setikai, the Fallen King. Whoa. Let's test down a little bit. So. So it's basically like a Risk Walker, but a bigger version of it, a bigger, badder version of Risk Walker. Wow. That is pretty epic. Let's go back and watch that again. Wow. I love the island as well, it's like completely... Okay, so it definitely looks faster. It's much bigger as well. Okay. Okay. Actually, it's kind of terrifying. One of the lines about it, like launching out the portals like that. That looks pretty terrifying. Okay. Well, <laughs> feedback and community playtests. We will share more details about the world as we continue to develop, develop and make changes. As always, let us know what your thoughts and feedback in our upcoming AMA or on Twitter, Reddit, or Discord. As the year draws to a close, we are getting ready to host our first community playtest for the Shadow Isle Summit for newsletter. Now for a chance to gain early access to this upcoming playtest. Don't miss the opportunity to get a playable preview of what we have been working on so far and to share your feedback directly with us. Wow, continue to stay updated on all things Dauntless by visiting our Dauntless community hub. The hub is where you can find live updates of all of our development in news, developmental news, in-game community activities, and more. Get ready for a season of frosty fun as we celebrate Frostfall this December. Clear skies, Slayers. That is so cool. That is really cool. Wow. I am do- <laughs> I'm so excited for this game. I'm not gonna lie about it. I'm excited for this update, dude. Like, this is everything that I wanted this game to be, you know? Like new fauna, new islands, a new way to battle the behemoths, and new behemoths. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I wonder if I, I don't know. I would love to be in the um, playtest, but I'm not, not sure if I can actually uh, record videos for it. That is so cool. I am so excited. I'm so excited for this game. I genuinely am. This update, I should say. So yeah, let me know what you think down below. Are you willing to wait for this update? And what do you think of the new behemoths and fauna that we've seen? And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.